what is the icon theory a candidate theory for unification of the four fundamental forces which starts by asking how to solve the problem of time in quantum theory what is the problem of time in quantum theory time is a classical concept it's part of a classical space time geometry which is produced by classical bodies these classical bodies are in turn a limiting case of quantum systems there hence must exist a way to describe quantum systems without classical time because we do not want quantum theory to depend on its own uh, limit namely classical limit because these classical bodies are a limiting case of quantum theory they are responsible for giving rise to space time classical space time and classical space time is again being used to describe quantum systems so that's a circular dependence which we would like to eliminate and hence find a way of describing quantum theory without using classical time how to have a quantum theory without classical time we will use adler's theory of trace dynamics so what is trace dynamics starting from classical dynamics raise all position and momentum variables to matrices these matrices do not commute now one could say of course that's what we do when we quantize a classical theory we raise all position and momenta to the status of matrices or equivalently operators these do not commute with each other but in quantum theory we demand that the q's and p's after being raised to operators satisfy the so called quantum commutation relations qp commutator equals ih bar however in trace dynamics we will not demand that quantum commutation relations be imposed the matrices do not commute the q's and p's do not commute the commutation relations are arbitrary they are determined by the laws of motion and the laws of motion are still those of classical dynamics you can take the classical hamiltons or euler lagrange equations of motion just replace the configuration variables and momenta by matrices you will get adler's trace dynamics but if it was just that it would be not very interesting there is a twist in what fundamental way is matrix trace dynamics different from classical dynamics well there is a twist the theory the new theory the trace dynamics the matrix dynamics has a conserved quantity which is not present in ordinary classical dynamics the following sum does not change with time take the commutator of q and p for the ith particle and sum it over all the degrees of freedom this is a conserved quantity and you notice in quantum theory each of these commutators would have been independently conserved that is not the case in uh, trace dynamics each commutator by itself is changing with time but the sum of these commutators is a constant each commutator as you can see has dimensions of action so it is as if the interacting degrees of freedom are exchanging action with each other but the total action uh, does not change this is the principal difference between ordinary classical dynamics and its matrix version the trace dynamics in trace dynamics the theory is assumed to hold at the planck scale it is a pre quantum theory quantum theory emerges from trace dynamics at lower energies as a consequence of coarse graining of the underlying theory what happens is then this conserved charge gets equipartition between all degrees of freedom and each of the commutators then becomes a constant by itself sum is a constant and after the emergence of quantum theory each commutator by itself becomes a constant and we said that constant equals ih bar because it's same for all degrees of freedom so in that sense quantum commutation relations emerge from the underlying trace dynamics in the underlying theory there is no planck's constant there is no h bar h bar is emergent at uh, lower energies and in fact quantum theory is a emergent 
phenomenon. It's an emergent thermodynamic phenomenon. The underlying theory, trace dynamics, is deterministic, but quantum theory is emergent along with its deterministic and indeterministic limits. It's emergent from our underlying matrix dynamics as a thermodynamic approximation. Okay, so as we said, trace dynamics is a pre-quantum theory, but space-time is flat in this theory. There's no gravity. At the Planck scale, uh, the theory is assumed to have a flat space-time and no gravity. To achieve our goal of quantum theory without classical time, we will now raise space-time points also to the status of matrices. When trace dynamics, the configuration variables and momenta of particles and fields were raised to matrices, but space-time was kept as classical uh, point structure. To arrive at our goal of quantum theory without classical time, we now raise space-time points also to the status of matrices, and we arrive at a generalized trace dynamics, which we can call pre-quantum, pre-space-time. Trace dynamics, Adler's trace dynamics is pre-quantum, but it is still having space-time. Our generalized trace dynamics is pre-quantum and pre-space-time. So we have no longer any classical space-time, but the beauty is that in there emerges a new absolute time, which we have called Cohn's time. It's a property of such non-commuting geometries in which space-time points are made into matrices that they have an inbuilt fundamental notion of an absolute time. So you lose classical space-time, but a new absolute time emerges and which allows you to define dynamics. So that is, we are lucky, you see, we lost classical space-time, but we recovered a new absolute time. From here, so this is uh, what we wanted. From here there emerges quantum theory without classical space-time. It's also a quantum theory of gravity which is called spontaneous quantum gravity. So in a nutshell we took Adler's idea of a pre-quantum dynamics from which quantum theory is emergent. We generalized it to a pre-quantum pre-space-time dynamics by raising space-time points to matrices so that Quantum theory emerges from here, but not just that, space-time also emerges in a different approximation. When many, many quantum particles get entangled with each other, a phenomenon called spontaneous localization occurs, and the entangled quantum system becomes classical. Concurrently, classical space-time emerges. Those quantum systems which are not too entangled remain quantum. So, at lower energies from the pre-quantum, pre-space-time theory, at lower energies there emerges quantum theory. But if there is a very large scale entanglement amongst these quantum systems, spontaneous localization occurs, the entangled systems become, quantum system becomes classical, and classical space-time emerges along with the emerging classical bodies. And those quantum systems which are not too highly entangled, they remain quantum. So this is the picture. We have now a description of quantum theory without classical time that I just described. This generalized trace dynamics and emergent spontaneous quantum gravity in Cohn's time. And from there, because of spontaneous localization, we can also have classical space-time geometry emerge. This leads us on to a new candidate theory for unification. So far, we only have quantum matter and quantum space-time in our theory, fermions and space-time geometry equivalently gravity. It turns out that if you would like to understand quantum spin in this pre-quantum, pre-space-time theory, we must introduce the other forces of nature, strong, weak, and electromagnetism. Remember, there is no Planck's constant, no h-bar in this pre-quantum, pre-space-time theory, but we would like to understand how to define spin, because uh, quantized spin must emerge from here. 
So to define spin properly in generalized trace dynamics, we are compelled to introduce the other forces of nature. And not just that, we are compelled to double the space-time dimensions of 4 to 8. We are forced to introduce four internal symmetry directions because we want to understand spin. Spin is the rotation from space-time to the four new internal directions. Introducing icons and octonons. Just as space-time coordinates are real numbers, the coordinates in the new non-commuting eight-dimensional space are the octonions. So spin forces us to double space-time dimensions to eight. The coordinates in that non-commuting eight-dimensional space are octonions. An octonion is an eight-dimensional number with one real and seven imaginary components. A real number is just that, it's a real number. A complex number has two real number components, a real and an imaginary direction. A quaternion has one real and three imaginary directions. An octonion has one real and seven imaginary components. These are the only four kinds of numbers in which the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are possible. Complex numbers, real numbers, quaternions, and octonions are the only four possible so-called division algebras in which these four operations can be performed. So the octonionic coordinate system provides the, space, the coordinates for these eight-dimensional physical space. An icon is the elementary particle in this space along with all its fields. So if we consider an electron in eight dimensions, along with its gravity, its electromagnetism, its weak force, that is an icon. Similarly, a quark is an icon if you include, along with the particle, all the fields that it produces. The icon evolves in this eight-dimensional octonionic space in cone's time. So what's the picture? There's an eight-dimensional space whose coordinates are octonions. The elementary particles and fields living in this space are called icons. An icon is manifest all the aspects, the field aspect as well as the particle aspect. So it's a bosonic plus fermionic. It has both uh, aspects. And in this eight-dimensional space, it is evolving in Cohn's time. A candidate theory of unification. Octonions are non-commuting numbers. They very strongly constrain properties of allowed particles and fields. The octonions dictate that there are four kinds of forces, all unified at the Planck scale, that there are six quarks and two leptons for every fermion generation, and that there are three fermion generations. Because the elementary particle, the icons, are now living in this 8D octonion space, they cannot have arbitrary properties. The space, the algebra of the non-commuting space determines that there are eight kinds of fermions. Six of them are quarks, two are leptons for every fermion generation, and the algebra dictates that there must be three fermion generations and no more. And charge gets quantized. It's a property of the octonion that only quantized charge, one-third, two-third, and three-third is possible. The octonions also dictate that four-dimensional classical space-time emerges from the eight-dimensional space after spontaneous localization. Quantum systems which do not undergo localization live in the eight dimensions. The Higgs mechanism and particle masses in the icon theory remain to be worked out. We have arrived at this theory of unification by addressing the time problem in quantum theory. So there's a deep connection between quantum foundational questions and the ultimate unified theory. Thank you for listening.